hello guys and welcome to this new video in the game engine Siri. hope you guys are doing good in the previous video we created the add the remove the get and you know the has component functions and each one was to add remove component and to get the component and the last one was to check if an entity has a specific component but the problem with those functions was they weren't yet fully implemented since we didn't have uh, our add component list or get component list function implemented so we couldn't actually store the component added to an entity so far and that's basically the idea of this video so without any further ado let's get started now the first function i'm going to be talking about is going to be the add component list I'm coming back to these two functions here. You see, I draw this line here to specify the fact that everything down here is new. So what we have up here is what we've been talking about. And the few things that we've changed, uh, I'm gonna it's just uncomment these lines because we didn't have this get component stuff. So if you've been following along, this should be normal stuff for you. So I'm coming back to the register system, but I first wanna talk about how to add a component list and how to get the component list. Now, to be able to add a component list, we first of all want to check if that component list is not already registered yet. Because you can see down here, our component arrays, you know, map is just a simple map which takes a component type ID and a shared pointer to, a, to, an, to an abstract component list. So we use the abstract because we want to store all the component lists inside of this map. So we simply go and check if this component type is not already inside of the map so we can we may actually register this new component and so we simply create a shared pointer and move it inside of our map that's just you know straightforward stuff and to actually get a component it's the same thing we simply go and get the type of that component since it's a template function so you see here since these are template function we can get the type of the component and here one thing i've done here is if someone trying to get uh, a component list which is not in existing right now then I simply want to go out and add that and return it so I choose to do it like that you don't have to the idea is whenever I want to add a new component which I haven't registered a component list yet I don't want to have to call the add component list you know to be able to do that that's why I'm just doing like if this component array is not you know added yet make sure you add it first and return it that's why if you see here, I'm going to be talking about this later. I have this entity here and I say add component and I say test one. You see, I haven't called the add. Normally, I should have done something like this. And uh, yeah, MGM. I should normally call the register since it's, it's a private function. I cannot access that. But I should normally say add component list before I can add the component to the entity. But as you can see, I don't have to do that since the add function will call the get function. You see, the add function here will call the get. And since this guy is not registered yet, he's going to be registering that before. Where am I? Yeah, he's going to be registering that and return it. So I can basically add a component without having to call register component or refer. So that's basically why I have to I had to do that. So that's basically how we can add and remove a component list. Now the next step is now how can we actually attach an entity to a system? Each system is only interested in those entities that have the same signature as the system itself. So a physics system would be interested in all entities that have a signature for a transform and a rigid body for example. So if an entity has those two components then the physics system want to actually store that entity to be able to actually update the information about that that's why we need a way to actually always check every time we add a component to an entity we want to make sure we also attach that entity to the specific system uh, that actually has the same signature as the entity signature and therefore we need to have like we have this function here which actually add an entity signature basically you can see down here the entity signature is just a shared pointer in which we have the entity id and the signature of that entity and so every time i add an entity so if you go up to your add new entity every time i add a new entity i want to call add entity signature so i want to create a new signature for that entity 
Now you can avoid having to do this by just using signature if instead of using a shared pointer of signature. Because if you have just signature here, when your program starts, each entity ID will have a signature created. It's gonna be empty, but they will have it created. But in this case, if you're using a shared pointer, you basically wanna have to say create one right now because if you don't do that, then the signature is not gonna exist. So that's why I made sure I have these two functions to add the entity signature. The first thing is to check if this entity does not have a signature. And so you add it by creating a shared pointer. And to get, get is basic, you check if this actually exists and you simply go and get it from the map. So I think this is straightforward and I don't want to spend too much time on that. Now I've been talking about the fact that we want to attach the entity to the system. We have three of these functions here. The first function actually check if an entity belongs to a system and to actually do that we need to get the entity signature and compare it to the system signature. Now keep in mind that an entity can have more component than uh, what a system requires because I, I'm taking an example for the physics system which only uh, has to you know store entity that have the transform and a rigid body but it might happen that our entity also have like a sprite renderer. It's still a part of the physics system, but it's also a part of a sprite renderer system. So that's why we simply go out and compare if the entity has every component signature inside of the system signature. Here we have a function to actually attach this entity to the system and it simply takes the entity ID and the, and the target system, so to say. So it simply check belongs to system. If it belongs to the system, then attach it to it. If it's not then erase it might happen sometime that maybe we've removed the rigid body component from our entity so we also want to erase because it do not belongs to him and this will never be a problem if the entity um, is not inside of that system because this entity here is a set entities here is simply a set and uh, you can erase uh, an empty component from a set and this is not gonna cause any problem this is just to make sure we always get it you know out of out of the memory if we have something like that and now the last function we have up here is the update entity target systems every time you add in a component to an entity you want to update the target system because as i said we have an entity which is a part of the physics system because it has a transform and a rigid body and let's say we add a sprite renderer to that entity so we want to update the target systems of that because it's now not only a part of a physics system but also a part of a sprite renderer system that's why we have this function here every time i add an entity every time i add a component to an entity i want to go and go through all the registered system and check if it has the signature required that's why you see in the art in the art component here i have the entity target system i have the update entity target system because we have a new signature and want to make sure that signature is actually taken taken consideration by all system and you know it's gonna move around the same thing is done by the uh, remove component remove component and so if I go back to the registered system you can see here all I actually do is to check if the system is not already registered that's the first thing I want to always do because I want to keep track on any kind of uh, you know error and things like that to know what is the cause because this can really make you frustrated playing or playing like this with a lot of memories and things moving around it's quite complicated and if you don't have something in place we can which can tell you that something went wrong you might have to run through a lot of issue now the fact that we might register a system at runtime is also important because while you're editing your scene the physics system is not actually doing anything but when you hit play you want to actually see the physics system updating your entities and so to be able to do that you have to actually go and target all entities that might belong to that system and put them inside of the system at runtime that's why i have this loop here so if the program is running and you hit play then i register the physics system i want to go for each entity i'm going to try to see if it belongs to the system and add it to it so that you can actually update those that's why we have this here and down here we call the start function to actually initialize the system and we create just we simply copy it over to our map for registered system down here as you can see and uh, to unregister system is just to you know destroy you know the system from the memory 
so therefore we need to make sure the system actually exists and we simply erase it and that's it now we want to see all of this in perspective actually test it and see if it this if this is working so as you can see you simply create your manager and you register all your systems you can also do this afterward after you've added all your entities because every time you register a system he's going to be searching for all entities that belong to him and update them but yeah if you already know some system are you know gonna be running anyway then you want to register them directly up front then when you add the entity then the rest is gonna be done just normally okay so here you can see I create a new entity and down here you can see I have this entity here which I haven't spoke about having to call the manager and pass the entity ID every time is a lot of work that's why I create the entity class which has the entity ID inside and a pointer to the manager so the entity ID which I created by the manager will be stored here and it's also stored a pointer to the manager so we can use that to actually call the function of the manager you can see I re-implemented all the function I've been showing you the add component is simply gonna be calling the manager and now I don't have to pass the entity ID anymore I just pass the argument of the of the component I want to add that's why you can see the entity here has a constructor which takes an entity ID and a pointer to a manager so basically that's it and so we can get the ID calling this function and I simply re-implement this function and uh, you know just passing this ID down here instead of passing it from outside I pass it in from inside since it's a member variable if I go back here you can see I add a component here and I create another entity using the manager and I still use the manager to add a component too and as you can see this is test one this should be added to this system here system one this one here should be added to system two and this one here this entity here should be added to system three because it has the same signature the signature are up here if I show you the system is here we have the test system here you can see this guy here has the component signature test one this guy here has a component signature text two, and this one has both of these so this is how you can create a system we haven't implemented any function yet update star and stuff it's because um, yeah we have them here we can just call them right now just like that because we don't want to write anything and here I'm simply going out and show you which entity belong to the current system that's why you see I'm looping through these entities and printing them out so you will see which entity belong to which to which system that's basically it. so let me go back so these are some test system that I created and you can see the inherit from base system so down here you can see I simply go out and add those entities and I call manager update this should basically go out and call the update function for each system here so if I call the update function for this guy he should actually show me which entity belongs to this system and the same thing for this because we implemented it here so if I go out and just compile this and run you will see for each system which was called here because we call uh, we simply say manager update you can see if I kind of let's just see here the entity 0 and the entity 2 belongs to the system 1 why you can see the entity 2 has the test component 1 right and the entity 0 here has the test component 1 2 so if I keep going and we have uh, the system 2 you know the test component this uh, entity 2 here has the test component 2 and the entity 3 has the test component and so you can see in the last one we only have this entity tree which can belong to this guy here because he needs to have both test component 1 and test component 2 and you see the result is exactly what we we expected so that's basically how you can create an entity component system um, this is really hard I know maybe the way I'm doing it it's not the way you will want me to do this because I should have been writing the code and things but if I start writing code here then we're gonna spend like an eternity to actually make this happen and I hope you guys learned something from this keep in mind that if you have uh, anything not working properly you can still go out and get the source code on my patreon I do this only for patrons because I want I really want people who are really interested in what I'm doing to actually have access on that but I always try to provide everything that you need here that's why I'm not hiding anything 
I um, I am not doing anything to kind of you know push you to go out and get the source code. No, I try to really do the best I can so that you guys can learn. And doing videos like this is not easy because it takes a lot of effort. And you know, yeah, just want to let you know that. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys really learned something. If you have any question or concern, please write me in the description below. And uh, I'm going to be trying to answer any of them. And have a nice day. And ciao.